Hi everybody, so this video is going to be about a few things that I think that a lot of people don't include in their hair regimen when they're going on a healthy hair journey. So these are a few tips that I feel like you should incorporate into your regimen if you hadn't already. I feel like it's very important and very vital to a successful hair regimen. So the first thing, I actually have my notes here like I pretty much do in most of my videos. The first one is making sure you have a chelating shampoo. What a chelating shampoo does is it removes the minerals and calcium and iron and whatever else that might be in your hard water and and a lot of the times that stuff sticks to your hair and it doesn't rinse off with regular sulfate shampoos or regular water. It just sits on your hair and it actually prevents moisture and protein and things like that from actually getting into the hair shaft. So the chelating shampoo that I use is from Ion and it's called Ion Purifying Solutions um hard water shampoo and this is what it looks like and i got this from sally's excuse it's kind of wet right now but i got this from sally's for six dollars so this is pretty good compared to the other key lane shampoo like the red ken and the um uh i can't think of so the other ones right now but usually they run about the cheapest I've seen it was the Paul Mitchell 3 which is the clarifying shampoo and that was $10 but the other ones were like $20 and $30 so the next one the next tip is making sure you have a protein and moisture balance and a lot of times a lot of people think that the protein and moisture balance is actually 50 50 but it's actually 90 10 or 80 20 so you don't want to use a lot of moisture and you don't want to use a lot of protein but um, as far as the protein I would suggest using that maybe one to three times a month no more than that and make sure it's like light protein you don't want hard protein and also if you're using like a protein based moisturizer like the Cantu I would suggest that you only do that maybe two three times no, like two times a week. Use that maybe two times a week. So no more than that. The next tip is using a seamless comb. And so the regular combs that we use that we get from our beauty supply, they have little um, lines in between the teeth that when you comb through your hair, it actually can cause breakage because your hair is so delicate, the hair fiber is so delicate that it's rubbing against those teeth. So it's best to get a, a seamless comb that the teeth are smooth in between. And the two that I use are from Hercules, I believe it's you pronounce it Sagamon. I put this down in the description. This is the 1975 this hankling comb and you can see like it's well you probably can't see but the teeth is super smooth in between it doesn't have that line so it just glides through the hair seamlessly without any snagging and breakage and the other one that I have is very small I rarely use this I probably won't ever use this because I don't feel comfortable putting a, a small tooth comb like this in my hair but this is the 6450 and these combs are pretty expensive I believe this comb was like $16 and this one was like $12 but they're really worth it because they're not plastic they're rubber and they last a very long time and then your hair will benefit overall in the long run the next step is making sure you use water based products and this also goes from stop from using stop using products that has mineral oil in it make sure your moisturizer the first ingredient is water go on the ingredient list make sure the first ingredient is water that's very important you don't want to use oil based moisturizer oils aren't moisturizer you have to have water and like if you have like a regular moisturizer and the first ingredient is water the rest of those are just basically things that help to uh, nourish the hair and close down the cuticles and that's it but basically the only moisturizer true moisturizer for hair is water the next step the next tip is basically when you're on a hair journey and you basically I guess do your lint check and then you realize that your hair isn't all the same length and then you trim it then a few months later, you're back at square one. Your hair is in the same length again. 
So I would suggest to stop trimming all of the time because hair grows at different rates. The hair on our head grows at different rates. So if you're constantly cutting, it's not going to ever like grow at the same rate. So I would suggest if your ends are healthy, like don't trim. Just wear protective styles and wait for the rest of your hair to catch up with that hair and then trim. Um, pre pooing A lot of people, well, I just shut the camera. A lot of people don't pre poo but it's very important. I know that some people pre poo with conditioners and stuff like that, but what I pre poo with is Vatika oil. And this is basically coconut oil. Coconut oil is the best thing to pre poo with. But the reason why a person should pre poo and it's not because you want your hair to be moisturized or you want your hair to be soft. The reason why you should pre poo is to prevent the cuticles of your hair from opening too much during the wash process. And so that basically just keeps the cuticle down, prevents breakage and all of that. So that's why you should pre poo and, and coconut is the best one. The best thing to pre poo with because um I forgot like the science behind it, but because of its makeup and its polarity, that's why it's best to put coconut oil on your hair before you co-wash, before you shampoo wash, whatever you do. Glycerin. Um, moisturizers with glycerins. I believe they should only be used in the fall, the early fall, and the springtime when there's a lot of humidity in the air because glycerin, the reason why we use glycerin because we want to attract moisture into our hair and that's what it does. So if it's super hot outside and you have glycerin in your hair from your moisturizer, it's not going to take any moisture from the hair, I mean from the air because there's not any moisture in the air. So what it's going to do is take that moisture from your hair. So you don't want that. So be cautious of products with glycerin. Um, conditioners I think is fine because you're going to rinse those off. But as far as putting like moisturizers in your hair with glycerin, I would suggest keeping those to the early fall and spring months when it's humid, when it's very humid outside. Um, another tip um, I don't know what numbers these are, but anyways, using instant conditioners as deep conditioners. All conditioners are not made the same. So, you make sure that you're deep conditioning with a deep conditioner. Not a VO5 conditioner, not a Pantene Pro-V instant conditioner. Normally, if it says keep on for five minutes, that's an instant conditioner. If it says leave on and rinse off then that's pretty much a, a, a um, not a leave-in did I say leave-in I don't remember but a instant conditioner so um, make sure that you're using a deep conditioner that is that's going to go into that hair fiber and moisturize that that hair or whatever put protein on it whatever just make sure it's a deep conditioner and not an instant conditioner um, sulfate free shampoos like, um, we say not to use sulfate shampoos, which is like, I feel like that's a, a great tip. Um, but we, we're told to use sulfate free shampoos, but a lot of sulfate free shampoos are very stripping. I use the Shea Moisture Yucca and, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, thickening shampoo. It has biotin and bamboo extract. This shampoo is sulfate free and it's all natural, but it's very stripping. So I only use this once a month. I can't use this every week because it's so drying and so stripping. So just because something is sulfate free doesn't mean it's not going to dry your hair out. So be conscious of that. Um, understanding your ingredients. This is very important when it comes to being on a hair journey. Um... As far as the moisture and protein balance, understand what are proteins. Understand what type of alcohol should be in your products. Um, understand um, what what type of oils and stuff is in your in your products. Just I, uh, a good way to understand this is um, through this book, The Science of Black Hair Care. Get into this. I learned a lot from this book. A lot about ingredients that's very important. You don't really want to put stuff in your hair and you don't know what the effects are. 
and that's very important because a lot of a lot of these products, I mean a lot of these ingredients that's our, that's in our products, some of them are cancerous and cause problems and stuff. So just be aware of that. Um another tip is research, research, research. The beginning of my, the beginning of my hair journey, about two months, probably three months, I was doing the wrong thing. I didn't I was looking at other people's regimens. I was just doing whatever, but I didn't know why I was doing it. Why did I need the moisturizing seal every day? Why did I need to use a sulfate free shampoo? Why do I need the pre poo? Um, why do I need to use certain oils? What do these oils do? That's very important. And I learned a lot from this book as well as hair hair sites like Hair Lista and YouTube. So just do your own research so you can build a regimen for yourself. That's very important instead of guessing, having a guessing game with your hair. And the last one is making sure that you have a pH balance within the products that you use so say for instance a lot of people I know a lot of people on hair journeys especially when you're first starting off you're going to be a little bit of a product junkie but you can't like okay you might shampoo your hair deep condition then put your leave in it right but you got to make sure that you have the proper pH balance for those products so let's say for instance your shampoo is like a seven your deep conditioner is a four, and then your your leave-in is a six. You is a six on the pH scale. You don't want to put that stuff. You don't want to have basically your products in that order because you want to base make basically make sure that the pH scale is going down as you progress from your shampoo to your deep conditioner to your leave-in. So a good system. I hope I'm explaining this right. But um, a good system would be a shampoo of seven, a deep conditioner of of um, five or six, and a leave-in of of four or five or four. Just making sure that that goes down. And a good way that you can make sure that you're getting, make sure that you're having the proper pH balance with your hair is one staying in the same product line. Make sure you're using the same product line or um, testing out your products with the pH with with pH strips so that you'll know that you're uh, gradually going down the pH scale when you're um, doing your hair or whatever. So that's pretty much it. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know below. See you all later. Bye.